What is up, everybody? Andrew here, and today we're going to have a top 10 list. We're going to talk about one of my favorite actors of all time, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite Schwarzenegger movies. Hit that music. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of those actors, especially nowadays, you either love or hate, you know, because of political views and some of the things he's done and said. But I really do like most of his movies, starting from Conan the Barbarian moving forward. I've not seen Hercules in New York, and I've not seen Pumping Iron. <laughs> I'm not sure I really want to. But uh, I, I do like most of his movies. He, you know, he's, he's not the greatest actor in the world, but he does have this physical presence about it. And, you know, him carrying a light machine gun and just blowing stuff up and his, his one-liners, uh, it's, it's hard to beat. So I'm going to get into it right now with my number 10. Coming in at number 10 for me was his big comeback movie. I believe it came out in 2012, and that is The Last Stand with him and Johnny Knoxville. I actually went to the movie theater when this came out and saw it with my friend Gibby. So, you know, shout out to you out there, John. But we had a lot of fun watching this movie. Uh, this is the definition of a comeback movie. Schwarzenegger plays this old battle-worn and weary sheriff and, you know, protecting this small town. And he's got this guy coming up from Mexico. Johnny Knoxville's okay in this. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of his TV show. You know, when I was 20, you know, it was okay. My son's 18. He just absolutely loves it. But he's tolerable in this movie. I love I love where they're shooting the pig and he, you know, he doinks himself with the gun. But, yeah, this movie's a lot of fun. And that's why it's here over a, a lot of his you know, 80s and 90s things. Coming up next at number nine is the only comedy of his you'll see on my list, oddly enough, and that is Kindergarten Cop. I absolutely love Kindergarten Cop. It's just the perfect mix of humor and action and drama. And uh, Schwarzenegger is just really good in this thing. He's got so many one-liners, you know. Uh, it's, it's not a Thuma. Shut up! It's just a lot of fun, and it's one of those movies where the child actor doesn't drag the movie down. And I appreciate it for that. It's got just enough story to keep it going. It's one of those movies from my childhood. I believe it came out in 1990, so, you know, I'm 10 or 11 years old at this point. That uh, It was good then, and I watch it now, and it still holds up. At number eight, I have a movie that was just a real big flop of his, and I don't understand why. It's Last Action Hero. Me and my friend Brandon Smith over on Macho Movie Madness and Smith's Grove Sanitarium, we absolutely adore this movie. And I can't figure out, we can't figure out collectively what it was about this movie, you know, that made it what it was at the box office. Because this movie has everything, and it's so quotable. I guess the world just wasn't ready for the fourth wall breaking stuff, and, you know, the going in between worlds, the movie world, and, you know, the real world. And I love the fact that the main bad guy, Benedict, played by Charles Dance, uh, he goes into the real world, and he shoots this guy. He's like, hello, I just shot a man. Hey, shut up down there, buddy. It's like, well, this is interesting. I can get away with this. Just, just a smart movie. Uh, great soundtrack. Uh, a few weeks ago, whenever somebody asked me what my favorite soundtrack was, uh, I can't believe I left off Last Action Hero, ACDC, Alice in Chains, Megadeth, Def Leppard. I love all those bands. So, um, yeah, Last Action Hero is a great movie. Please check it out. If you've not seen it in a long time, I think it might be over on, like, Max or something. Um, Last Action Hero is totally underrated, and I love this movie, and all I can really say to us, the movie viewing public of 1993, who was like Jurassic Park crazy and Schindler's List crazy, is you know, shame on all of us for not giving Last Action Hero a chance. Coming in at number seven is a movie that nobody seems to talk about anymore, other than the show FUBAR is pretty big, and it's kind of, you know, a distant cousin to this movie, and that's True Lies, uh, you know, directed by Jim Cameron, and starring Jamie Lee Curtis and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just a really fun espionage movie. And it's another one of these that kind of gets lost in the shuffle of Arnold movies. You go through his catalog and you go, oh yeah, True Lies, that's so good. Uh, love the villain in that movie. There's just so much stuff going on. And it's, it's worthy of this spot here at number seven. It should probably be just a little bit higher, but there's some movies I like just a little bit more than it. So that's why it's here. Coming in at number six, I actually have a tie. I've got my top five, and they are my top five and have always been my top five. But I've got two movies that I didn't know where to put them, and I like them both about equally. And that is 
uh, Commando at A, and The Running Man at B. Um, they're going to share the number six spot because I like them just about equally. I like The Running Man for the sci-fi, post-apocalyptic stuff. You know me, Escape from New York and movies like that. We've actually thought about doing a versus over on Macho between those two movies. But uh, Commando is so much fun. You know, it's just balls to the wall action and just absolutely ridiculous. I've actually reviewed that on this channel. I might link that to this video here. Uh, please watch both of these movies if you've not seen them in a while. It's just uh, top-notch Schwarzenegger. There's just a few movies I like just a little bit better uh, due to storyline and acting. The Running Man and Commando are both awesome, and I had to include them, and I like them just a little bit more than 7 through 10. So it's kind of a cop-out, but a tie here at 6 because I really wanted to get both of those movies in here. Now we're really getting into it. We're getting to the top five of my Schwarzenegger countdown. And coming in at number five is a movie I've loved since I was a child, and that's Conan the Barbarian from 1982. You know, it was from that magical summer of 82. I'll probably talk about that at some point on this channel. But this movie, and I shouldn't have been watching it as a little kid with all the rapiness going on in it, but Arnold was destined to play that Conan character, and he's so good at it. I like Jason Momoa as that character, but, you know, he can't touch Arnold in that. And, you know, I love all the side characters in this movie. Sandal Bergman in there, and Mako, or Mako, however you pronounce his name, James Earl Jones. Just an amazing movie, and that movie transports you from our world to that world. And John Melius did a really good job directing that movie. It, it had to be here at number five for me. Just absolutely love Conan the Barbarian. Coming in at number four is a movie I showed you on my recent Blu-ray haul, and that is Total Recall. I actually kind of have an argument where I want to put this at number three, but I couldn't do it. Uh, there's just one movie, while I enjoy watching this a little bit more, it, it is a better film. So Total Recall is just amazing. It's based off of Philip K. Dick, a short story. This is everything I like in an action movie. It's got sci-fi and action, lots of humor in it. Hey, Benny, screw you! It's just... <laughs> Can't sing the praises of this movie enough. Uh, like his character of Douglas Quaid. Very smart movie. This is a thinking man's action movie. And it's got that ambiguous ending. I just absolutely adore Total Recall. And if you've not seen it in a while, uh, be sure and watch this one. Because it is just a roller coaster ride. Coming in at number three is a movie I, I kind of wanted to put Total Recall ahead of. But I couldn't do it because earlier this year I rated this movie a 10. I don't think Total Recall is quite a 10. Um, that's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. A lot of people would say this is probably Arnold's best film. Not not me. Um, I think it's a good film. I think it's a little bloated, to be honest. But it, he does give a great stoic performance in this movie. It is a seminal action movie it, it, as far as the genre goes. And I love his character of that T-800. I like to call him Uncle Bob in this thing. And while I do prefer T-1, which you've probably figured out because I haven't mentioned it yet, and him as the bad guy. I did like how they switched this up in this movie. It's just a shame that a lot of people see this movie first and they just assume he's a good guy and go back retroactively and watch the first one and go, what? Because it was the complete opposite, you know, back in the day. But like I said in my review, this is one of those movies when I saw it in the theater for the first time, it was like, oh man, the sense of dread, you know, there in that factory whenever the liquid metal Terminator starts coming back together and you see the look of surprise on the Uncle Bob's face. Uh, just a really good movie. I, I saw this uh, first run theatrically, and then a few years ago, uh, I mentioned it in my review, uh, Alamo Draft House showed a double feature, T1 and T2, and that was one of the, my favorite nights ever at the theater. So yeah, Terminator 2 is my number three, and you guys can chastise me all you want for that in the comments, but uh, after all, it is my list, and so that's where it falls. So before I get into my top two, I wanted to list some honorable mentions and one dishonorable mention. Um, I'm not a fan of the movie Twins. I just watched it recently. Schwarzenegger and DeVito and Kelly Preston, they're, they're all okay. Marshall Bell. Um, but I'm just not that big a fan of the story. And I watched it and I'm like, oh, that was kind of flat. So it's not really a dishonorable mention, but that's why it's not here in the top 10. It, it would be maybe number 12 or 13 on my list. But if you're expecting to see twins and you're like, where was that? That's, that's why it just, after a rewatch, I'm like, uh, I, I don't know about that. But as far as my two honorable mentions, 
and people are probably going to roll their eyes at this, but you know how I like Conan the Barbarian. Um, Conan the Destroyer and Red Sonia. Neither one are very good movies, but I like that Barbarian thing. I really like him in both of those, even though he's Calador in one of them. Over on Macho Movie Madness several years ago, we did the Essential Arnold Schwarzenegger video and the Inessential Arnold Schwarzenegger video. <laughs> and both of those movies made it, but I do like those movies a lot. But in that video, my friend Chris Ramsey, he kept getting those two movies mixed up because they are very similar. You know, he's putting characters from one into the plot points of the other one. And I'm like, dude, no. But I really do like both of those movies, even though they're definitely not anywhere near his best. But they probably would be my number 11 and 12. So yeah, I hope you guys don't send me to some Siberian gulag for that. But <laughs> I had to throw those in there because to me, they're a lot of fun. So that brings me to my number two Schwarzenegger movie. And it's one I've just recently reviewed, and that's Predator. Uh, just so masculine. It's toxic masculinity in this movie, but it's great. They just go from, from action scene to action scene. They're chomping every every scene in this movie. Jesse Ventura, Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, Bill Duke. Uh, Predator can do no wrong. And I was kind of surprised, you know, looking back at that video. I gave it a nine and a quarter, but that's how much I love this movie. It is so good. And, you know, I rated it above a movie that, that I just rated a 10. But that's just because of the fun I have with this, and it's so much better paced than Terminator 2, and that's why I put it ahead of it. But if you're looking for a movie with the action and the one-liners and suspense, and it's got the sci-fi element too, and, and that's really why it's here over Terminator 2 for me, besides the pacing, uh, you cannot go wrong with Predator. And to the surprise of no one who clicked on this link, if you've watched your reviews at all, if you're looking at my shirt, it is The Terminator. This is, in my opinion, James Cameron's best movie. It's one of his only movies, besides Piranha 2, that's not over two, two and a half hours. This movie's smartly written. It's well-paced, where all the exposition's told on the run. There's so much action. There's the horror element. I call this a cyberpunk Halloween. It's just an amazing movie, and I put out a glowing review about this at the very beginning of the year. I, I think I titled it My Favorite Film, uh, and it is. This is my favorite film of all time. You know, you can have your Godfather, and Goodfellas, and that kind of thing. But, man, I've got the Terminator. Uh, Sci-fi, time travel. It's just, it's got everything in it. And I, I love all the performances from everybody. To me, this is Michael Bean's best performance. I love him as Hicks in, in Aliens, and I, I like him as Johnny Ringo in Tombstone. But to me, he is the man in this movie. Linda Hamilton's pretty good. I love all the side characters, Traxler and Vukovic. The Terminator is my number one Arnold movie. It's my number one Cameron movie. My number one movie of all time. As a matter of fact, I've collected quite a bit of Terminator stuff. Um, this is a special edition DVD, you know, with all the extras on it. Um, I, I don't keep a lot of cases anymore, so, you know, I keep these in a binder. Um, here is the Bare Bones DVD, you know, no features on it at all. I've already shown you this one, but uh, the Crown Jewels, I actually kept this. Uh, I bought this, uh, I believe this is the 1991 or 92 version, and I bought it on my 13th birthday in like 1992, and I've worn this thing out. I've not watched it in years. Uh, I, I need to get my mother-in-law's VCR, because she actually still has one, and watch this thing. I remember loving the trailers. There's a movie called like Love and Murder that I still actually want to see that I believe uh, Orion or New Line or somebody put out. But I really kept this just for sentimental reasons, you know, because I've had this for over 30 years and our VCR broke. And so I really had no reason, but I'm glad I did. And somewhere I've got the novelization of The Terminator uh, written by Randall Frakes, who's one of James Cameron's best friends. I'm not sure where that's at. Um, it's driving me nuts, too, because I really want to read it. There's some really good stuff in that Terminator book that's not in the movie that they wrote in, you know, like the Terminator sees this lady get in this car and. She backs up and actually backs into this car and then takes off. And so it's learning. And so it does the same thing when it takes off. Things like that. and Restealing pizza. But I need to find that and show that to you guys. I actually bought it off of like a thrift bookstore online. Or maybe it might have been Goodwill for like four bucks. I looked the other day and it's worth like 60 to $70. At least what it's going for. I've got a Terminator theatrical poster. that I, It's actually in my son's room. I need to hang it up here somewhere. But... That Dio autographed album by Vivian Campbell is just so cool. So, yeah, that, that takes that spot. So that's my Terminator collection. I'm a bit of a geek. But I'd say 
if you've got your favorite movie, you've got your collection too. So guys, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Uh, let me know what your picks would be down in the bottom. I, I know I've got a controversial list, especially once you get into that top five. A lot of people probably wouldn't put Coney in there. They wouldn't probably have the balls to say they like Total Recall better than T2. But, you know, it's it was my list. But that's how I've always seen Arnold is that one through five. And then after that, the rest of the movies are just fun. Movie six through ten or actually even twelve. I can grab any one of those movies off the shelf and put it in and just have a fun afternoon watching Arnold, you know, a brewski and a pizza and just let it roll. But once again, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, as always, I'm Andrew, and I'll be back.